Australian buyers continue to soak up every SUV they can possibly get. And here's another one, Honda's CRV. The CRV range comes in six variants. Although there's seven listed on the website, you can get two engines, one transmission, one body style with five or seven seats. The base model VI starts at 28,290. A medium sized SUV for under 30 grand? That's not something you can say about every brand. For 35,490, you get this the VTI S. It's five seats. 1.5 litre, 140 kilowatt engine, and it's got a few niceties like LED headlights and driving lights. There's also a whole bunch of chrome. I'm a bit of an old fashioned bloke and I really like chrome. The more the merrier. It's a little bit to shine up, but I don't mind that so much. Problem is of course all modern chrome, or pretty much all of it, is plastic. There's cameras all over the place, including one in this mirror that faces back that way for Honda's Lane Watch. That's the thing that they use instead of blind spot monitoring. Personally, I'd prefer both. I'd like to have the camera and blind spot monitoring. This particular car also has Honda Sensing. Honda Sensing is made up of six technologies. Lane Departure Warning, Adaptive Cruise Control with Low Speed Follow, Lane Keep Assist, Road Departure Mitigation, forward collision warning and mitigation braking. And the mitigation braking is the Honda term for autonomous emergency braking that you now need to get five stars. This car, of course, has five stars. It also has eight inch alloy wheels with a full size spare in the boot, if you please. And it's got smart entry and unlocking. That means that you can just touch these little ridges to lock and put your hand inside to unlock, so long as the key's in your pocket. There's also a power tailgate, which operates from a little button here under the handle. There's also a locking button there too, so once you've loaded or unloaded your groceries, you can lock the car from the back without getting the key out of your pocket. Just here is the reversing camera, and this reversing camera is brilliant. In fact, I think it should be mandatory on every car for safety. Inside, the boot is incredibly capacious. There's enough room for my fold-up bike, electric, please note, and the camera gear. There's a soft pull-out cover to cover your gear, and that can be removed easily. The seats fold up and down in a 60-40 split, and there's two ISOFIX positions as well. But we're always complaining about access to get in and out of cars and a lot of people buy cars like this, these SUVs, for ease of access and their high riding position. This one has doors that open 90 degrees. I don't think I have been in the back of a medium sized car that has this much space in the back. This seat is set for me and look how much space is between my knee and the seat in front. I can actually stretch my legs out. This is so comfortable. And the seat is set so that it sits above the ones in front so I can actually see out of the windscreen pretty easily. There's also some vents in the back for air conditioning and two USB chargers. The good thing about having a car that's so space efficient is this is so high that there's so much headroom but also there's so much footroom. This floor is almost completely flat except for the tiny little hump in the middle. I've got to say I'm not a huge fan of the seat fabric. Although it's comfortable it does feel a little bit synthetic-y but that sports fabric for you. There's also a place to put maps or a tablet or whatever should you find yourself having a little bit of a road trip. But this is the seat that's going to be occupied most of the time. When you turn the car on the infotainment system will not do anything until you read that disclaimer which personally I find a little bit annoying every time you start the car. Yes, I've seen it once, but let's just get on with things. The dash is electronic, of course, with the central section having a digital speedo and taco, and the side instruments showing the usual temperature and fuel, plus all the warning gauges. 
steering wheel shows the active cruise control, so that operates even at low speed. There's the audio and menu controls on this side, including a voice button to operate Siri. Though having said that, Siri will operate without that. The center stack is pretty clever too. I can't help but think that the transmission selector being on this hump reminds me a little bit of a 1970s Tarago. The seven inch screen is a touch screen with inbuilt navigation by Garmin. There's also, as I said before, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I think this looks pretty smart. I also like the soft feel of the dashboard above the vents and on the fascia. And there's an interesting metal detail too. The center console is particularly clever. Once you take this piece out, you can store something incredibly big in there. You could even get a small laptop in if you wanted. There's an HDMI cable, which will play video so long as the car's standing still, and two more USB outlets, plus a 12 volt power outlet. And there's another 12 volt outlet right here at the center stack. There's little doubt that CRV is excellent value. But the real value doesn't show up until you actually get on the road. That active noise cancelling is just extraordinary. It's so quiet. But now that we're moving at speed, this thing feels like a limo. And you saw how much space was in that back seat. You saw how much space rear seat passengers have. That is almost unprecedented. See that pictures come up here when I put my left hand indicator on? The reason that people use a CVT is, for a lot of reasons I suspect they're financial, but one of the benefits is that engine revs are kept as low as possible, for as much as possible, and they only increase when you need the power. And that means that you have incredibly good fuel consumption. And in fact, this 57 litre tank based on highway fuel consumption would get you just about from Brisbane to Sydney or Sydney to Melbourne. That's one of the main reasons car companies cite for using diesels, that the long distance economy is extraordinary. However, with small turbo petrol engines being as economical as diesels, if not more so, diesels have largely fallen out of favour. And car companies, one after the other, tell me that no matter what, the overwhelming choice of buyers, if they're given a choice, is to have a front-wheel drive automatic SUV with a petrol engine. So essentially, the car companies are giving you, the buyers, what you've asked for. There's a few things about the infotainment system that I find a little bit clunky. There's buttons all over the screen and you're really not quite sure what's a button and what's just a readout. And there's all sorts of odd ways to get to settings. I don't dislike it as such, but it does take a lot of getting used to. See, some of the things you press and nothing happens, sometimes you press and there's a button behind it. And there's nothing obvious to indicate that that's a button. But I do like this set out very much. There's a climate button which takes you straight to the climate settings. And there's dual zone climate controls below that. You don't need to go into settings to do that. There's fan controls and what have you down here. And that's one of the things that I like of all the controls that can go into these infotainment systems. I think climate control should be one that stays at least with its own controls as an option. The active lane control is very, very subtle. And all of these things, of course, you can turn on and off in the menu. If I was to go on a road trip, I'd be very happy to do it in this. There's so much space. The ride is excellent. The steering is light. There's not a whole lot of feeling about it, but there's not a whole lot of feeling with most cars that have electric steering. Brakes are nice and progressive. It doesn't reach that point where you put your face into the windscreen parking is unbelievably easy and there is an 11 meter turning circle fairly small for a car this size and there's honda reliability 
and this Honda 5-year unlimited kilometre warranty. Finally, they've come to the party. On top of that, there's a 6-year warranty for corrosion. That's one thing you don't hear much of anymore. Once upon a time, you'd be lucky if your car made it through the first 12 months without rusting to bits, especially some brands. I'm going to rate in its segment at 8 out of 10. And as I mentioned on a long trip, this is incredibly comfortable. The seats are comfortable. It's so quiet. Active noise cancelling, that's something that you once only got in very expensive cars. And I don't call a car in the mid 30s expensive. Do you? As always, hit the button just there to subscribe.